Welcome back to the Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster. My name is Tails Fyraga, and in the last episode, we started our raid on X Death's Castle. And in today's episode, I am leaving X Death's Castle. And you might be thinking, well, that's a little bit silly. You need to be here. But there's actually some missable content that completely, completely just, I completely just blanked on that we can go get now. And it's missable content that unfortunately becomes inaccessible after we leave Galuf's world. And I guess to spoil things, after we beat X-Death in his castle, we will be leaving this world. So I want to make sure I get everything that I can in here. So, we're first going to start with a new summon we can get. And then I'll probably buy some of the rest of the magic we're missing. And then, I kind of also want to throw myself at the Gill Turtles again. Even though I know that's like, not a particularly advisable thing because they're strong, but you can only encounter them in this world, so it's like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Alright, so going to that cave in the Northwestern Island. And I guess we can switch Kryl back to... But I kind of want you to learn some time magey stuff too. No, this will be fine. Go through the cave, get one random encounter, Ironback! Ooh. Ironback is actually really good if you have a, uh, a Beastmaster. You can capture one of these and then you'll be able to use it on the boss we're coming up to and it'll do a lot of damage. But a single Blizzaga spell will kill all of them. Give us some of those levels that we crave. Alright, in here are three things. A lake we can't do anything with. And a chocobo forest that we also can't do anything with. Quack. Because this chocobo is a female, so you can't ride her. I guess that's just how how the horse birds work. But what we really want is not to accidentally hit the shoulder buttons. What we really want is a random encounter inside this forest area here. So let's let's do some killing. Here we go, killing again. Just a little bit of damage there. And we got some holy waters too, which will be nice because. Again, enemies with zombie appear in x castle, so when we make the return trip... There we go, here's the boss in question, Katoblapas! This is the first time Katoblapas has actually appeared as a boss fight. Makes his debut in this game. And he's not super difficult, I want to say, but he does have his fair share of annoying stuff. We'll cast Blizzaga on him. I think actually two Blizzagas does do the trick and kills him. But he'll counterattack spells with Demon Eye, which is just a petrify skill. Other than that, he'll also just try to cast Drain on people. You can cast Stop on him, and that's actually very useful, but Stop doesn't last particularly long on him. There we go. Two of them, and we get Katoblapas' Summon, which, if I remember correctly, is a party-wide Petrify skill, which is very nice. Unfortunately, we have to use the item from our inventory, but hey, there we go. Naisu Naisu. Alright, now you may be thinking, okay, well, there's still the Guild Hurdles to deal with, and I know you wanted to use those, otherwise you'd be dwelling on them and be engulfed by bitterness. And yeah, I will be engulfed by bitterness. Ooh, that Blizzaga did a lot of damage. Definitely like that. Get some haste gut going, and that'll even get rid of the slow from Sticky Web. Stab you. Nope. I'm just going to miss every attack. 
All right, you appear to be a magnet, and I am steel. Well, she's also steel, but your magnet doesn't work on her. Another Blazagger. There we go. All right. So, for something that I want to try with the Gill Turtles, I do want to get my AP up on some of the other characters. Specifically, I want to have somebody that at least has some time magic to them. I want somebody with white magic. And I want somebody with summon magic. But, there's also a lovely little job called Bard. And you may not have known this, but Bard is very effective against the undead. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of shifting around here. So, I'll meet you guys at Ball Castle. So instead of meeting you guys at Castle Ball just to do the grinding, I am instead meeting you guys right here at the Gill Cave. Now, there is a certain setup that I'm doing right now that I'm putting a lot of hope into. I'm gonna move Lena to the back row too, just for, for safety. Alright, actually. Now you've got the Genji Glove, so you've got your max defense. So you may have noticed that all my party members except Lena right now are at critical health. You might be wondering, oh, that's a little bit weird to have that. But then you remember, knights can cover for critical health allies. Now, the other part to this strategy is I'm going to get Golem on everyone. And I'm going to start getting haste on people, too. I'm going to get all our defensive stuff set up and covered. But the big strategy here is I'm going to cheese things by using Lena's counter ability. Because what I did before this was I actually got Lena to monk level 4. So Lena's going to, as long as I keep hitting guard, Lena's going to remain immune to physical attacks. Hope I don't want uh, Mighty March, actually. Uh, I'll actually get Swift Song going, just to get that speed boosting. But as long as I'm performing guard, then Lena is not going to take any damage, and she's going to be countering with a lovely little physical counter attack. She's going to block those. And when it's her turn, we guard again. And basically, I'm trying to use Requiem to, to cheese everything. So Requiem to deal damage to the undead. Lena uses the guard command to block all those attacks. Probably shouldn't have actually put Bart's to singing Swift song, but I mean, he's also not taking any damage, so he can just sing, sing all he wants. I'm just going to block that and block that. This strategy is honestly working a lot, and it's kind of reminding me of one of the strategies in Final Fantasy III, or at least the 3D remake, to fight that game's super boss, the Iron Giant. So in the DS version of 3, they actually added a super boss in, they had a lot of content, and that super boss, you can actually kind of fight that boss using a unique strategy of one Viking, two bards, and a devout. And how that one works is basically, uh, Basically how it works is that you put the, the Viking in the back row with two shields equipped and you have all the party members in the back row basically. Viking has two shields equipped and casts Provoke every turn. Meanwhile, the Bards are equipped using a combination of different uh, harps 
and they'll be alternating between casting different buffs every turn and casting uh, one of the specifically one of the harps has a song that deals percentage-based damage. And that percentage-based damage easily hits the damage cap when you have a, a boss with as much HP as that Iron Giant does. So it's effectively just relying on the percentage-based damage you're dealing with your bards to try to do as much as you can, to be everything you can. To hold on to what you am, to pretend you're a Superman. Alright. Uh, maybe I should actually smack Bar Barts with something just to get him to, to stop singing that song because, like, he also has the summon and we might want to get. We might want to get a uh, golem back up. But I'm also timing this so I'm not taking too much damage, all things considered, so... I don't think our golem shields actually haven't broken, I don't think. I could spend a turn healing Lena back up. Requiem? Unfortunately, Gil Turtle just has a lot of health. Or, oop, you already have haste, okay. I'm gonna take a turn to, to heal Lena back up. More Requiem. That Swift song is meaning that we're gonna get our turns a lot. And that counter means that occasionally we are just not taking damage. Block you. Okay, no, we've we've still got some uh, some golem barrier left in the tank. Requiem. We're doing pretty solid damage, all things considered. Right. Wait, because you're still under guard right now. Requiems does it take? I think these things have like 30,000 health, so we've been hitting it a fair amount. We've been hitting it like a, a decent chunk. Now, I guess the one last thing to talk about with this fight as well, you might be wondering, okay, well, I get I get the whole strategy here of, you know, tanking with a knight, using cover and counterattack from monk to, you know, block and retal- ooh, Okay, alright, well, we have officially run out of... <laughs> we have officially run out of Golem Barrier. So, hold on, I need to, to get everyone back up. That would be very nice. There is our raise. Oh, I knew it would bite me. I knew it would come back to bite me. Alright. Raise. And Golem Barrier again. Okay. We can resume our strategy. So, the Golem Barrier, as long as it remains active, you're also not going to take the status effects from its turtle counterattack. So, that's very nice. Well, we can at least speed this up with more Requiems now. Wait for everyone to sing before I input the next guard. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter, okay. I thought I was I thought I was still in guard state as long as I didn't input anything else, but I guess not. We've got a little more. Just a little more. There we go! Earthquake! Oh right, they didn't have flown on, that's right. <laughs> but hey! That's how you kill the Gill Turtle. 
There we go. Now, was that a good use of our time? Uh, probably not. It was a little bit dumb. But, you know what? Honestly, I, I just feel catharsis. <laughs> I feel like a great turtle-shaped burden has been lifted from my shoulders. And we can teleport out of there now. So now you have a strategy if you ever want to fight gill turtles the, you know, the quote-unquote proper way. You know, actually fighting them and not just using the cheesy quicksave strat from that previous episode. Do I recommend it? No. Unless you've got plenty of time to, like, grind and make things easier. Not really. I mean, 5,000 gil isn't terrible, but it's not really that worth it either in the grand scheme of things. I don't know, it's a little silly, but it's really cool that that strategy works. But also, it really is just a little bit silly. Now, the big problem is, now that we've done that, uh, I don't know how much time is left on this video, because I don't know how much I'm cutting out. Uh, I guess we can just get back to Castle X-Death and then work our way back up. Since we don't have to worry too much about, like, story cutscenes anymore. Could do that, or I can meet you there and we can get, like, our next summon as well. Because our next summon is in Xdeath's castle. But, hmm, that's also going to be a lot more video for us to cut, too. I... Now, I, now I'm regretting doing it. I was, I was like, I was all gung-ho and just like, yeah, it's going to work. Everything's going to be cool and A-OK, -okay. and now it's just like... Uh, do I really want to go back up there now? Dude, I, I've lost my flow, the entire thing's out of whack. Well, let's get our abilities set back up, at least. It's just going to be a really weird episode. Barts... Arts. How about you be a blue mage? I'll make you a blue mage, or... Actually, you know what? How about we make you a geomancer again? Just so we don't have to cast float on everyone to get, get around. And I'll have... I'll have summon equipped on you. I guess one thing we can cover now as well is, once you've actually activated, like, Xdeath's castle, you may be thinking, what happened to the healing spring from earlier? It's gone, it's replaced with lava now. So the healing springs are a no-go. Well, I can turn encounters back on. That'd probably help. Actually, I'm also wondering, uh... I'm pretty sure the enemies have, like, overall changed now, so, like, the old enemies that used to be in the basement aren't there anymore, but... I am curious, actually. If I go back down to the dungeons, will the old enemy set still be there? You know, today is just, like, the, the curiosity episode. And, you know, my curiosity is killing me, just like a cat was killed by the curiosity. Okay, I, I don't think we're gonna be seeing the old enemies. I think it's all just Xdeath's castle enemies from here on out. Let's see what these guys are leveled. Hmm. 
Well, the Reflect Mage, I think, might be a multiple of four, but it reflected, so... But the Reflection didn't do anything? So... I don't know, video games are a fun thing... A, f a fun thing! That's what they are! And speaking of fun things, I've actually been watching uh, some Super Sentai recently. Because I was, I was curious about it, because I loved Power Rangers growing up. And especially because some of you guys may know... <laughs> my main claim to fame, aside from making mediocre Let's Play content, is that I'm the pioneer of Power Rangers Time Force Game Boy Advance speedrun. I was the first person to sit down and just be like, Hey, uh, I'm gonna speedrun this game, because no one else has done it, so I figure I'll pioneer it. And it'll be an easy world record, and I mean, it was, because nobody was there. But then it was just like, oh, people actually kinda like to, to run this game. I should get back to it, because I did enjoy playing Time Force Power Rangers. But I it definitely was starting to fall off as far as like my execution and skill. Okay, you've been using way too many attacks. You've been living past your expiration date here. Let's see if we can do Katobal Pass. Apparently, it's just petrifying one enemy, but it works. Kryl still gains experience while she's petrified, huh? That's weird, usually they don't do that in these games. Huh. That is weird, but cool. Anyway, I guess to finish the story, so I've been watching through Time Ranger recently, since uh, Shout Factory has all the episodes of Time Ranger up on their website, and I'm almost finished watching it. And I have to say, it's really good. Honestly, like, Time Ranger's really fun. It's pretty great. I can't say that there's, like, any, like, specific issues I have with it. I just think it's a very fun time. I think my main problem is just that... The opening theme is not really what I expect from, like, Super Sentai. Because a lot of times, like, the Super Sentai theme songs, right? Or at least the ones the ones I knew beforehand, so like Zoo Ranger and Die Ranger and stuff, are these songs that are, you know, boastful and catchy, and they're there to, to hype you up and get you hyped up for the Rangers and talk about how strong they are and they're easy to sing along to. Time Force's, or Time Ranger's theme song is kind of hard to sing along to. And I remember actually reading that uh, one of the reasons why Time Ranger was not particularly successful, it had some of the lowest toy sales of the entire power of the uh, entire Super Sentai series. In fact, I think it has the lowest toy sales out of Super Sentai. And part of that was because the show did really well with older audiences, but it wasn't very well liked by kids' audiences. Kids had trouble th singing along to the theme song, and the the tone and theme of the show was a bit dark, so it didn't do that well with kids. But it actually had a lot of success with like older fans of Super Sentai. And one of the fun things is, I actually read that at some point when they were bringing Time Ranger over to America as Power Rangers Time Force, they were actually considering, since the themes were overall a bit darker than normal, they were considering actually that it wouldn't be a Fox Kids show, but rather they'd air the show on Fox's primetime instead. Which is just baffling to think of. Like, I get that it is tonally, like, not as goofy and cheesy as, like, Mighty Morphin or anything like that, but... At the end of the day, it's still a kid series, but then again, like, Star Wars is a kid's movie series, and you have a lot of adults that take that show, or those movies, way too seriously. That show way too seriously. 
I mean, there have been Star Wars shows, to be fair. And some of them actually are quite good. Eroga! Ooh, that did a lot of damage. I don't think I like that very much. I don't think I like that very much either. Especially because I don't think... Oh, I'm three short for a raise. Oh no. I don't think I can learn... Uh, while well, I have the blue magic skills that equipped, I think that requires me to actually have the learn spell equipped, the learn ability equipped. I don't think having blue magic on immediately like implicates learning spells. So I need these guys to to cut it out. That's also bucks on me for going gung-ho with Aqua Breath earlier, not having that... that power to raise. Another Diamond Dusto. These guys will die eventually. Level 2 old, that ain't gonna work on us. Ooh, Off Guard, that's another, uh... That's another blue magic spell we can learn. Maybe I should just make everyone blue mage again. Maybe that'll be the way to go. Oh, you know what? That era would do so much more damage if we actually had an air knife attached to Ferris. I think white mages can use knives. Maybe they can. Either way, the, ni the air knife is still going to be super important later on. Gives us one of our most powerful abilities. Hey, this place looks familiar. Alright. I'm gonna tent up real quick. And then... Again, I just put myself in an awkward spot for this video, because I've been recording for an hour, right? But... Do I want to make this a weird video and just... Like, see where the chips fall? Let's get some more... some more job leveling up, I guess. I at least want to reach the next boss. Ooh, you might be the next boss. Don't much care for that. Maybe I can missile you. I can! You've been missiled! You've been gusted! I was realizing on the way up here... Up here... Oh yeah, that's right! Blood Sword in this game has low accuracy. I was probably in an earlier video talking about, huh, Bloodsword doesn't seem to have, you know, too much of a downside in, in this game, but... Nah, it's got poor accuracy. Just contained an elixir, that's very good. Just contained this random encounter, which isn't too good, not too jazzed about this. Does Aqua Breath Pierce protect? Or reflect? I think it does. Yeah, okay. Ooh, but Aquabeth has kind of fallen off as far as damage now. It used to be really powerful, and now it's only sort of powerful. Not particularly strong for its MP cost anymore. So I might just have to go with Gaia. Gaia just does not seem to want to hit. Oh, Kryl, you've turned to stone. You've become a statue. I told you not to do that, but you did it anyway. Just like, no, I want to be a statue now. I'm a small child. I want to be a statue now. 
There we go. Nothing a little smack won't solve. There's another item here. Kira on Bart's and a cure on the entire party too. Another yellow dragon, but we get the advantage here. We are the ones with power. And I'm the one with the missiles. Let's try it again. Bake him away, toys. Oop, missile missed. Okay. Well, that's fine. At least we know, like, generally how much damage missile is going to do, and, like, because of that, we generally know how much damage the Yellow Dragon has. It looks like 8,000-something. Because it drops the enemy to one quarter of their health. And it looked like it did like 6,000-something, rather, so... It looks like 8,000, maybe like 9,000-something at the most. So yeah, yellow dragons, we know how to deal with now. Alright, take a look over there, at all that lava. What do we do? Where do we go? Well, unfortunately, we have to travel through this lava. Though very much fortunately, we don't have to worry too much about that because we have a Geomancer. Ooh, these guys might be immune to Petrify. Which would make sense, they're kind of mini-boss type enemies. Heal you. How much damage is Eninage going to do? Ooh, very nice damage indeed. Quite powerful you are. Quite dead, Ferris is. I don't much like this encounter set, honestly. I think I would have rather only fought one of these guys. But I guess fighting two of them is just what the game wants me to do. Yeah, I'll sack a bit more money. There we go. Alright, Ferris, I need you to get up. We need to save Ferris. Right, I don't have anyone else with white magic right now. Well, I know what I can do. No, I can't. Because I don't have any white magic on Bart's. Why am I so bad at this? Abilities... White magic level 4... Because you're not using your MP for anything else, so... Might as well have you as... The Samurai Paladin. Alright, let's climb the ladder. And the ladder takes us to just a single magic dragon, okay. Yeah, you're just a cute little guy right there. And we're gonna murder you, as we do to all cute little guys. Alright, by stepping on that switch, we now have this. Now normally, all those holes would also be skulls as well. But, since we have Geomancer, we don't need to worry about that. And hey, Twin Lance, that's really good. Because Twin Lance is not a spear, but it does allow you to attack twice. However, I don't think we have any jobs that can use it right now. No, we, well, no, we don't. Alright, two ways to go. If we go north... Then it warps us... Over here, to this summon. Now, you'll probably want to be a little bit prepared for this fight. And I'm gonna give you a couple of pointers. This summon... And I'm gonna... it's gonna be a hint, too. This summon... 
has reflect. I'll join you if you're stronger than me. Come on, show me what you've got. It's Carbuncle, everyone's favorite. I'm gonna get Golem up on you. Carbuncle has two major phases to it. One phase where it doesn't take very much damage at all, but is fantastic for setting up, and one where he takes a lot of damage. Now, right now, he's in his phase where he doesn't take that much damage at all. He's basically just gonna cast single level aura spells on us, which isn't going to be too bad, all things considered. You can start getting shell on people. I can hit him with Gaia, see how much damage we do with that. Sonic Boom, so it does nothing. Well, we just have to wait for this guy to change four. So I'm gonna get Shell on our people. Try for another Gaia. Oh, it hit that time, and that... That did an awful lot of damage. Ooh, bounces a Cura at us. What are you doing? That's a little bit silly. Shell on Bart's. Wonder if we can get another Sonic Boom. I guess Sonic Boom does like percentage based damage or something. Because that did an awful lot. That was damage cap, actually. Bounds in death. But you can't hit me. I'm way too powerful for you. I want you to please change form so I can wail on you more. Break. No one gets hit by it. Oh, he's got a lot of evasion, too. Another break. No one gets hit by it. You are staying in this form for an obnoxiously long amount of time, mister. You're supposed to have switched by now. Unless I triggered something weird with your AI because I hit the damage cap. Ooh. Their Reflect wore off. Well, you know what that means. It means it's a perfect time to wail on them with more spells. There we go. So yeah, so normally the Parbuncle's supposed to switch between two forms, like that big nasty form and a tiny little, like, little babby form and it didn't go baby mode for whatever reason. But whatever. You kids are strong after all. This could be good for a laugh. Receive the summoned monster, Carbuncle. Carbuncle casts pr or, uh, reflect on all party members. Go down, hit that skull switch. And it warps us over here into the lava. Cool and good. Alright. So there's another way we can go now, and that's south. Well, actually, I think the way we should probably go is back to the save point and end the video. I think. Because I've gotten, like, one episode's worth of usable footage here, and I'm up to, like, an hour, twelve minutes, so... Whoopsies! Welcome to the episode where Tails gets sidetracked. So let's finish this encounter and then I'll probably just end the episode and we'll finish our assault on Xset's castle in the next one. I think that's probably a good idea. Hit you with Era, hit you with the Gaia, hit you with the Attacker. There we go. Zeni Nage and White Magic level 6. So Ferris has all of her White Magic levels now. I guess to show off what happens if you press down there, it extends the bridge again. And that- oh! Right, that takes us to another save point! So you know what? This would be a good time to heal up and end the video! 
So in that case, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video where we finally reach the top of Exdeath's castle and finally defeat the main antagonist himself. Seems a little bit early to be fighting the final boss though, don't you think? And I'll see you guys later. This is Tales of Rocket signing out. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you're having a wonderful day.